Hey guys, the car scene here coming at you with another video. Today we're going to be checking out this 2021 GMC Canyon AT4. This is the off-road trim of the GMC Canyon. And just so you guys know, the GMC Canyon is the sister truck to the Chevy Colorado. Uh, it's GM's mid-sized truck chassis. Um, it's been out for a couple years now. Original release was in 2015. Uh, 2021 was a mid-cycle refresh and they've been making incremental updates since. And today I'm going to give you a quick walk around tour of this 2021, tell you all of its quirks and features and everything that it has going for it and against it so that you guys can know whether you should spend your hard earned cash on it. With that said, let's get into the video. Thanks to Parks Buick GMC here in Greenville, South Carolina for letting us borrow this vehicle as well as many others. Uh, I just want to say thank you to them. They're a huge supporter of the channel and really help us out when it comes to making more videos for you guys. Looking at the front end design on this 21 GMC Canyon AT4, uh, most GMC Canyons are going to get a chrome grille with a chrome or body colored bumper. Since the AT4 is the off-road trim, you're actually going to get a dark lower finishing that has a little bit of a metallic shine to it, um, as well as this darked out grille um, that also has a little bit of a metallic shine to it. Um, looking at the bottom, the chin spoiler is actually removable for better ground clearance and approach angle, as well as you get these red tow hooks down below. Speaking of the headlights and fog lights, you're going to get a projector beam headlight with an LED daytime running light and an incandescent turn signal. We actually do have a GMC logo on these lights, as well as LED fog lights down below. Moving down the side of the vehicle, you can see we've got some pretty nice humps over the wheel wells, uh, one here and one on the rear wheel well. Looking at our cab, you can see we've got a sloped back design. This is true of both for the cab. Blacked out mirror caps as well as blacked out door handles. Both gloss black um, with a matte black middle of the window finishing. Uh, looking on the roof, it's a pretty basic roof. Uh, no panoramic glass roof, no roof racks, nothing crazy like that. This one is equipped with side steps. And looking at these wheels, these are pretty nice GMC wheels, pretty basic. You get Goodyear Wranglers on the AT4, which have a pretty aggressive trim, uh, or I mean tread for going off-road. Um, and we actually do have carpeted wheel wells. I had somebody comment and ask about these carpeted wheel wells. These are actually for sound deadening. This keeps the truck uh, riding quieter. It is a little harder to clean than your flat plastic, but it's a lot quieter going down the road. I'm um, looking at the rear. We have incandescent tail lights, uh, brake lights, turn signals, and running lights. Uh, and we do have our bumper step that's true of all GM vehicles uh, with a little handle right here uh, in the side of the bed. Looking at our rear tailgate, you can see we've got our GMC logo in the middle with our Canyon uh, on the bottom. And I'm wondering when GM is going to go to stamping Canyon into the tailgate like every other brand has switched to. Uh, so we got AT4 on the right hand side, V6 on the left hand side. This truck is available with two engines, the so 3.6 liter V6 that's in it now with 308 horsepower. Um, and then a 2.8 liter Duramax four cylinder diesel, uh, 369 pound foot of torque on that one. Both are gonna come with an eight speed automatic, however. This truck as equipped is rated to tow 7,000 pounds. I believe hold 1,580 pounds in the bed. And let's check out this tailgate. So it is damped, it is aluminum, so it's nice and light. This one doesn't have a bed liner, but there is a spray-on and plastic available. Um, if you get the spray-on one, it'll say GMC at the end, uh, just like all the GM products do with their branding. So looking underneath the truck mechanically, we're gonna have a leaf spring rear suspension, a full-size spare tire. Um, this one does not have a locker. Uh, well, it doesn't have a electronic locker. I believe it has a G80 uh, mechanical locker that when it slips, uh, it'll actually sense that slippage and then engage a pin, uh, which will engage the locker. So coming back around, you can see the full profile of the truck. Let's check out our fuel filler, see if we have capless fuel fill in this 2021. And we do. And this is where your def tank would be if you got that 2.8 liter Duramax diesel. Let's climb inside the rear seats next. So climbing into the rear seats of the 21 Canyon. Uh, this is going to be very comparable to the Colorado. Um, looking at our door panel, you can see we've got soft touch at the elbow, soft touch right above, hard plastic around, um, more storage here as well as down below. Uh, you can see that we do have that sloping window design. I've mentioned in a past video I don't like this design due to the fact that it makes the interior feel smaller, um, but it's what we have. And actually speaking of the interior, let's climb inside and see how much room we have. So we're going to use our step to get in because we have it. 
So this seat, pretty reclined. Uh, me sitting at 5'9", uh, so it's not super far back. Um, I've got about two inches of room on my knees. Uh, room for my feet. If this seat were more erect, I'd actually have a lot more room, but this is just what I find comfortable, and I think a lot of drivers will. Um, but honestly, we've got a decent amount of room on both sides of me. Um, as a, an adult, I uh, definitely don't feel uncomfortable in this rear seat. You can see we've got this carbon fiber on the outside with leather and then cloth in the middle insert. We do have an armrest that's going to pull down, has two cup holders. You can set your arm on either side of it. And we do have three seat belts across the top. And these headrests are able to be lowered in case you needed uh, these down. So looking at our rear window, it is a manual slider, it's not power. It does have defrost though on this back window. We have two lights back here, one on each side, two USBs and a 12 volt as well as a little storage nook down below. The driver's seat does not have a mat pocket, but the passenger seat does. Um, with that said, let's go move up to the front area. Climbing into the front seats of the Colorado, um, you can see we actually do have a manual key here. Remember, this is a 2021. Um, this is one of the big things I think that they really need to change um, about going into 2022. Here's our key fob. You can see it's pretty basic. We do have remote start, but it still has a regular old key, and this is gonna go in the ignition as well as in the door if you were to not use the key fob for unlocking it. Uh, looking at our door panel, same design as we had in the rear, soft touch near the elbow, storage down below in two tiers. Here's your power windows, power locks, power mirrors. Um, this one has this film over it because we just got the windows tinted. You can see we do have a shiny metallic finish on this plastic, as well as kind of a faux carbon fiber going on here, so the material quality isn't terrible. Um, looking at our floorboards, we do get GMC AT4 specific floor mats. Seats are the same style design that we had in the rear with the carbon fiber, leatherette, and cloth. And these seats actually do have the AT4 embossed in the headrest. So climbing inside, let's start this thing up. We'll go through the gauges, we'll tell you about the infotainment, um, as well as some of the other features that are in this interior. So starting the truck up, we're going to put our key in. We got our GMC logo. We'll turn it one click and we'll start the truck up. And of course the radio is on static, full blast right away. Um, so looking at our center gauge cluster, you can see the home screen starts with our miles per hour. It actually does have the uh, traffic sign recognition, which would, is what that little square on the left-hand side is. Should we pass a speed limit sign, it'll say what that speed limit was. That way we don't forget. Moving over, we've got our distance. You can see we're in V6 mode distance to empty, oil life, tire pressure, oil pressure, transmission fluid, and a blank page. Uh, moving over, we've got our music. This truck is in demo mode right now. Same with navigation, as well as our phone settings. So in terms of infotainment, you've actually got a really decent setup in the middle screen. Uh, speaking of our analog gauges, you've got your coolant temperature here, as well as your fuel up top, tack on the left, speedo on the right. And if you look over here to our left, we'll go over these controls. We do have a trailer brake controller, um, which is nice. A lot of mid-sized trucks, in fact, I think this is the only, this and the Colorado are the only mid-sized trucks that you can get a trailer brake controller in, which is nice. If you're towing anything more than 4,000 pounds, number one, your trailer should have trailer brakes. Number two, you should be able to control them with the type of control that you get with the pinch knobs, as well as being able to control your gain. And here is your dial for controlling your internal lights exterior lights and your four-wheel drive control. This does have a two-speed transfer case with four-wheel drive low as well as an auto mode. Um, looking at our dash, you can see we've got a nice vent here. We've got this stitching that goes all the way around, which is nice, follows all the way across the dash. I already went over the center screen. Uh, looking at our steering wheel, this one does not have adaptive cruise. We've got regular cruise control right here, and these buttons control the screen. This is to mute the radio if you're on the phone, and this is your voice command button. Uh, looking in our center stack, looking at the screen first, this does have uh, MyLink, which is going to be in all the GM vehicles. Um, you've got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, uh, wireless hotspot, just about everything that a modern car would normally have. You can pull up your rear view camera. This does not have and is not available with a 360 camera. Another thing that needs to be updated for 2022. Um, like I said, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, you got your home button, your back button, your skip, your volume, and your tune, as well as a check mark and a power button. Moving down from there, you can see we've got our dual zone automatic climate. And actually this is a single zone. I said dual zone, but that's just because it looks like a dual zone. This is your fan speed. This is your automated climate. You can set it to auto and just let it do its thing, which is nice. Um, we do have a tow haul mode, traction control, hazard lights, cargo light, 
hill descent control, because remember this is the off-road trim. Heated seats, you can heat the, uh, the bottom and the back of the seat, or just the back. Little storage nook for change or whatever, but honestly this isn't very deep and isn't very handy. They should redesign this portion. Same thing on the passenger seat for being heated. SD card slot, two USBs, and a auxiliary port, as well as a 12 volt. Little storage nook here, this is pretty useful. You can put your phone, a little wallet, whatever you want in here. Uh, moving back from there, you can see we do have a nice big meaty shifter. Um, you've got park neutral, or park reverse neutral drive and low. Uh, this is an eight speed automatic. You is no other transmission available. Uh, two cup holders here, storage behind that. Looking at our armrest, you can see it's leather with the stitching around the edges. And as we open it up, you can see we've got tons of storage in here. Um, there's a spot for USBs, but no actual USBs in this particular one. Moving over back to the passenger side of the dash, you can see we've got a nice big glove box. This area of the dash is very nice. That stitching comes around, goes under, um, looks really decent. Uh, passenger door is just like the driver's door with that nice metallic finish up top with the carbon fiber in the middle. Uh, looking up top, you can see we've got a sunglass holder as well as lights and OnStar on the mirror, which is the uh, emergency telematic. Should you need directions home, uh, should you get in a crash, you can call the police, it can do a lot of things for you. Looking up top, you can see we do have lights as well as a mirror. Checking our coverage, you can see it does slide out. There's your coverage. All right, that's the interior. Let's get going under the hood and talk about that engine. Okay guys, underneath the hood of our 2021 GMC Canyon AT4, we have a 3.6 liter V6 making 308 horsepower, 275 pound-foot of torque, paired to an eight-speed auto. This engine's been out for a little while. They've put it in a lot of things, from the Chevy Traverse to the Acadia um, to a whole bunch of other vehicles. So this engine is a parts bin engine, which is good. You're gonna be able to find parts for it for a long time, and it's very tried and true due to the millions, maybe even billions of miles of testing. Um, so this engine is gonna be solid for you. It gives plenty of power. It's the second most power in the class, followed by the uh, Nissan Frontier. I believe it's the third most torque um, for gas, excluding the diesel options, um, after the Ranger and the Frontier. Um, the Ranger is going to lead the segment at 310 with a 10 speed auto, um, but that's okay. This one's very, very competitive. Looking at our windshield washer fluid up front, uh, fuses here, battery here, brake fluid here, oil fill here. Um, dipstick is actually going to be. I'm not seeing our dipstick. There it is on the side of the engine. So right here is our dipstick. Um, you can see we got our coolant here and our air box here. So in terms of maintenance, this engine bay is very well set up. No power steering fluid to top off. It's a closed loop system. Um, we do have our hood latch here, as you can see, and our GMC embossment on the hood covering. With all that said, all in all, this truck is priced at $42,700. Um, for that price, you can get some really decent mid-sized trucks. For $4,000 more, you can get the GMC Canyon Denali, which gives you heated and cooled leather seats, as well as wood trim inside. Looking at this one in particular, do we think it's worth $42,000? I think it definitely needs a revamp. I think if this thing had some of the features like we talked about in our review, like push button start, passive entry, um, it might actually be there. But being that this is a pretty old chassis, with a pretty old interior from 2015, which not to say it's not good, it was really good in 2015 when it came out. Um, I would say that this truck is not worth $42,000. I would say it's a dope truck if you want an off-road mid-sized truck. I mean, it's got good rear seats. It's got really good front seats. Um, it's got very good towing capability, as well as the off-road ability is pretty decent. I wish they would include an electronic locker so that you can control when it's locked and when it's not, but I understand that the G80 is less expensive to manufacture and easier for the consumer to use. Um, but I would have liked to see the addition of an electronic locker considering just about everybody else has it. Great engine though, uh, the, the drivetrain is perfect. They can leave that when they're redesigning this truck. But as of right now, in 2021, I would not suggest buying this truck for $42,000. Like I said, if you want an off-road midsize, there's plenty of other options. Um, but if you're a hardcore GM fan, this is a perfect bet for you. It's not extremely expensive, it's got a lot of decent features, and it's a really nice truck overall. Thanks for watching guys, if you guys are enjoying the content, let us know down in the comments. If you're not, uh, also let us know so that we can try and get you better content. And thanks for watching guys, we really appreciate all the support that we get on this channel. 
So thanks for watching guys and have a great day.